Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another course vlog, this time from Marriott's Shadow Ridge Resort. A beautiful Nick Faldo design and the only one out in the California desert. Don't forget to smash that like button down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And here we go. The first hole is a mid-size par four with just trouble off the left and the right of the tee. Really got to thread that tee shot down there. And this green is super tricky. A precedent to the rest of the golf course. You're going to have some unbelievably slopey greens that typically run very fast. And throughout the course of here, we're only going to have one little technical glitch where you don't see, but you hear my first tee shot right down the middle. Nice pitching wedge here into the green. Now that side hill lie is a sign of things to come. Not too many flat lies down the fairways unless you're kind of right down the middle. I left that approach shot a little bit short and trying to get up and down here for a nice par. But I just got to hit some putts and maybe they'll go in today. On to the next one. A difficult, difficult par five. Apparently the most difficult on the entire course, probably because of the length sitting there at over 600 yards. A wider fairway than you're going to see most of the day and there's only some trouble off to the left. Oh wait, no, oh, there's a little hidden bunker there on the right hand side too. What do you know? Some rolling fairway and you gotta deal with that water hazard all down the right hand side into the approach into the green. Another bunker is gonna pinch your approach shot as well and that fairway is uh, concave there in the top of it so it's gonna ricochet balls off to the left and to the right. Much more bunkering into the green, an elevated green here. And we're gonna be facing a middle hole location today. As with all par fives, just got to unleash it. There we go. I was really able to let that one go. Play the big high draw, and that's how I can get a ball to go over 300 yards. About 330 down the middle. A big full three wood here. And I push this one off a little bit to the right. Not so much that I had to deal with the water hazard, but enough that I had to deal with a bunker. Let's splash this one out and try to get up and down here for birdie. That would be awfully nice. This one's makeable. Nonetheless, a nice stress-free par and get the first one on the card for the day as we're facing a nice little short par four here. A demanding layup is going to be necessary as this elevated and perched green off to the right is as severely sloped as we're going to see all day. Big, big bunker down the right hand side you got to avoid so just lay up something off to the left to give yourself a comfortable number into this hole. Lots of contours up around this green. You really got to make sure your club selection is correct. Today, we're going to be facing a back left hole location. Now, this two iron goes about 255 to 260 yards for me. So I was trying to leave a nice three quarter sand wedge into this back hole location. And there was a little baby ridge just behind the hole. really thought that ball would come off that back slope a lot more than it did. That's why I set that camera up. Thought I'd get a nice cool spinner down in there, but another 20 footer here for birdie and oh boy, just another slippery one slipping down off to the left hand side. Cozy one in for another par and we're on to the first par three of the day. This is going to be a mid iron for most people 177 yards from the tips is going to play a nice full eight iron for me 
Uh, the pin today that we're going to face is a front right hole location as opposed to that middle. And you can see from all the coloring there in the green, there's plenty of tears you got to deal with up there. So many slopes up in these greens. It was said that Nick Faldo designed this course thinking about the Australian Sandbelt courses down just south of Melbourne. And boy, those courses typically run very firm and fast, and the ground game is typically very important. Not so much where you land the ball, but where the ball is ending up, because it's not typically going to end up where it lands. A nice little up and down par there was able to salvage a little bit of momentum as we're going into two of the more difficult par fours we're going to see here on the front nine. The first one here, number five, is a really cool design. It looks absolutely stick straight, but that bunker down the middle plays as effectively a dog leg. Got to go around the left hand side. It's kind of similar to number three, but it's got an extra 70 yards on it. So you got to take that much more stick. A big, big elevated green once again with lots of slope, especially off to the right hand side. And we're going to be facing a middle left hole location. Was trusting that big high draw and there it goes off the right hand side down right into the fat of the fairway leaving me a pitching wedge up the hill. Oh no. Oh no, easy ball. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go! Go! Yes! That's how you use the slopes. Was able to use the big kicker slope off to the right-hand side of the green to kick down into the middle and another makeable birdie chance here from 15 or 20 feet. But it's only makeable if you get the putts there. You got to get the putts to the hole. I guess another tap in par is what we're going to have to deal with. And we're on to the most difficult hole we're going to see here on the front nine. Nearly 500 yards in a par four. Thankfully, they keep the fairway bunkers out this time. It's a little bit of a rise to this uh, slightly blind fairway. And as you see, it does neck down, so it does get a little bit narrower. Now we're going to have the lowest part down here by the crossing cart path, and we're going to be raising back up into the green. So these bunkers are going to kind of protect that front edge of the green. You're going to have a big, big false front off the front of this green and it's got a big tier to it. A really big high left side and a low front side. Just another drive down the middle. Not much more I need to say about that. Leave myself a comfortable nine iron. This flag was tucked back left. I'm aiming center of the green. That was mission accomplished. I put it right in the center of the green, but I forgot about that slope. So it kicked all the way down to the front, 50 feet up the hill for birdie. I'm just trying to get it up that slope and get myself a nice comfy par. This four footer was a little tricky one, but sometimes you can just get them to roll in and keep the pars on rolling. A much more difficult par three here, number seven. Up the hill, playing 213, we were facing a middle left hole location, and those bunkers on the right are as deep as you can find. I'm six foot six tall, and I couldn't see over the lip. Uh oh. Foreshadowing much? Yeah, this ball's going right. Not exactly pleased with that 64 degree wedge out of this deep bunker. A nice big splash gave myself a really makeable look here for par. I was underneath the hole as well, but I forgot to hit the putt. Oh boy, another bogey. 
Here we go, though. One of the prettiest holes here on the front nine, number eight. It's got, I think, the widest fairway on the entire golf course. It must be 80 yards wide, but there's also bunkers all through it, especially that one right down Main Street. Gosh, who wants something right down the middle? Got to figure out which way you're going to go. You're going to go over it. You're going to go left. You're going to go right. What are you going to do here? Into the green, that's another elevated plateau green from down in the fairway. You can't see the surface. Two iron down to the left-hand side of the bunker was the play for me, leaving a nice pitching wedge here into the green. And this green has a, uh, it's kind of a crescent shaped, and if you're in the front of it, there's a giant false front. To which I had to putt this through. Look at that big false front that this thing was gonna take it. This is such a strange putt. Well, I left myself another makeable look at par. Coming off that putt on the last hole, though, I wish I had a little bit more confidence and I thought I could roll this one in. But like I said, confidence. I just got to get the ball to the hole. That must be three putts today. I've left just a couple rolls short. And here on number nine, this isn't exactly the easiest hole to finish the front nine. I mean, that big leg down the left, well, it's there the entire way. And you got another bunker going to be pinching your drive down the right. Now, sitting here at 417 yards, it really makes me decide if I want to pull driver because believe it or not, this second bunker here does come into play for my driver and man, that makes that fairway super narrow. We're going to be facing a back left hole location on this green and it is relatively simple compared to the rest, but it does fall off to the left and to the back right. So I'm going to take this two iron. I've been hitting it straight all day. I'm going to put another one right down Main Street here. Thought that might just barely catch the left of the bunker, but it kicked just off the left hand side and down in the middle of the fairway. A full nine iron into this back flag. And I tried to turn that nine iron over the way that I can turn my long clubs over like the, like the driver and the two iron, but left that nine iron just out a little bit. Had another 30 footer on down the hill for birdie that I thought I could roll in, but in the end, it's just another tap-in par for a salvaged Lord. plus three on the front nine. Oh boy, that was a tough ending to this nine, huh? Got to get better at these short putts. Got to start getting the ball in the hole. Please don't forget to smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Later.